Welcome to Real Possibilities with AARP Connecticut. Hi, I'm Elaine Werner, Senior Program Specialist for Community Outreach and Volunteer Engagement with AARP Connecticut. And Real Possibilities, you might wonder what that means. Well, Real Possibilities means that we never want your lives to be inhibited by any possibilities as you age. We believe in quality and dignity as you age. And we believe to come into your local community, as we're doing right now, and hopefully enhance your life with resources. I'll be joined in just a moment by one of ARP Connecticut's volunteers to talk to you about a program that we hope will enhance your life. Now, perhaps you have had an experience about today's topic. Think for a moment. Have you received an email from a friend, maybe, that didn't look quite right? Didn't sound like the kind of message you would get from a friend. Or perhaps you saw a website that you were supposed to click on. You were going to maybe win a prize or find out something exciting. Once again, that website didn't look quite right. Or you received a phone call from perhaps an odd area code, maybe even a uh, foreign area code. Perhaps you picked up the phone and the person began to ask you about personal information. You know that phrase when something doesn't seem quite right, maybe it's not right? Well, maybe that is the case. So today's topic, again, is about fraud. ARP started the Fraud Watch Network to protect and prevent fraud. Do you know that every two seconds, someone's identity is stolen? That's pretty scary. So we are here today in your local community to tell you how to protect and prevent fraud and stay ahead of the con artists and the scam artists. And here to elaborate on that subject is our volunteer from AARP Connecticut, Migdalia Cruz. Welcome, Migdalia. Hello, how are you? Good, so great to have you. And uh, Migdalia's been out in the community doing presentations on the Fraud Watch, Net Fraud Watch Network, that's hard to say sometimes. And uh, first though, Migdalia, if you would tell our viewer what brought you to ARP as a volunteer, what drew you to us and, and why you're volunteering with ARP? Well, Elaine, two years ago, a member of AARP, which was my cousin, uh, Marilyn Diaz, she invited me to an event. So I went to the event with her and it was a um, awards event. So I found it very interesting and there I decided, okay, let me see what it's all about. So I got the application for um, to become a volunteer. I filled out the application, went through a vigorous um, information and giving my information to the um, ARP officers mm -hmm. and then I became a volunteer. Mm -hmm. For my volunteer during that time I had to do various trainings before I even went out to do presentations. So I've been doing this for about two years now and it's been very very rewarding. And we, we are so happy to have you on board and uh, you said you know sort of a vigorous training and whatnot you mm -hmm. went to. I know, uh, Migdalia, uh, being on staff and the program specialist for volunteer engagement, that ARP offers so many programs. Of course, today we're spotlighting the Fraud Watch uh, Network, but we love for potential volunteers to learn all about what we do so you can get a sense of it before you get there. But you ended up, uh, among other things, but zeroing in on the Fraud Watch Network. Why the Fraud Watch Network? What, what drew you to that and what are you doing there? Well, what drew me to it, all the scams that are happening. And not only in the overall community, but specifically for me in the Spanish community. Being Latina, mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to go out to the La Latino community and be able to speak to them in their own language and explain to them things that are happening because it's always sometimes happens that it's the language. There may mm -hmm. be a language barrier and you tend to give out information that you don't want to give out or you shouldn't give out. But let me tell you, I go across the board to everyone. I know you're, you're out and about, <laughs> you're ubiquitous in the community. And by the way, ARP does presentations on the Fraud Watch Network uh, throughout the state. Uh, before we leave you on this program, we're going to tell you how you can tap into that and perhaps find, if not now, but in the future, a local Fraud Watch presentation in your community. Uh, Migdalia, tell us, why is fraud, uh, or protection and prevention of fraud, I should say, important to AARP? Uh, it's important to AARP because over 50 years now, AARP has been very um, vibrant 
in working with consumer protection mm -hmm. and being able to protect all humans, everyone. Okay? Now, Fraud Watch Network is a resource which will provide tools to all Americans, everyone, and in Puerto Rico about what's going on with the different scams, identity theft, and fraud, and how to protect yourself, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, how you will see things coming about, and, and, the, and therefore. And you know, you mentioned uh, Puerto Rico, I'm glad you did. Actually, ARP has an office in every state in the country, it, and it also includes Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. Washington, D.C., and the Virgin Islands, with a head, big headquarters in Washington, D.C., and another office in uh, California. In fact, we have 38 million members and growing, and if you're one of our members, we want to take a moment to thank you for being a member. Uh, Migdalio, talk about some of the, uh, you know, I said every, Every two seconds, I mean, awesome, uh, scary, as I said. Mm -hmm. Every two seconds, somebody's identity is stolen. Talk to our viewer about some of the quote-unquote popular scams at the moment. Some of the popular scams are lottery scams, um, IRS scams, which is what's happening in the past year more than any other time, the Social Security scam. And let me tell you a little bit about the Social Security scam. Right now, the call that's coming through is, you are due a cost of living increase. And so what's happening there, you get excited when you get this sure. phone call. You know, and they say well, we're from the Social Security Department and you are owed a cost of living increase. So what's gonna happen? You're, you're excited and you say, wow, that's great. More money coming towards me, yes? So they say to you, um, we, in order to give you this, we're going to need your name, address, your social security number, we need you to verify mm -hmm. these documents and these things, and your banking account or routing number. Because mm. you've let yourself get so excited with what's going on, you tend to give out this information. And this information is not going to social security. It's someone else using the name social security in order to get your information. And then they go in, mm -hmm. they get that account number, and from that account number, they can then withdraw your money or get your Social Security check. Very very scary stuff, and you know, the con artists tap into your emotions and everything, exactly. get you excited. Mm -hmm. Of course, who, who wouldn't want to know about a cost of living uh, increase, increase, or you just won the lottery or a special mm -hmm. prize or anything like that. What about uh, personal documents? What should we be protective of people even talk about our mail too, that we should be protective of that. You should be very protective of your mail. You should get it shredded. Because why? When you throw it in the garbage, anyone can go into the garbage cans and get and take your mail out of there. They take out your name, mm. your address, and you'd be very surprised just with your address. They can get other information about you. Remember, we've become a global community. So a lot of this information is out there. They can even get your health information. So think about those things mm. too. Okay, yes. so it's it's like one thing ducktails into the next. And you know what else I want to mention, Magdalia? Of course, it's you know uh, ARP membership is fifty and older. Uh, you can be younger than fifty. Oh, and yes. be a member though too. Uh, but fraud, you know, does not escape any of us Absolutely. at any age. What I talked about receiving the emails, the the weird websites, the odd phone calls. You know, we all get all of that, and we need to be protective of that. I want to take a moment to uh, mention something new, a new relationship that ARP has. Uh, some of you may have seen the movie Catch Me If You Can, where Leonardo DiCaprio played a uh, person that was actually a real existing person, uh, not a fictional person, a, non a, mm -hmm. a uh, real person that was a scam artist in this country and was able to be successful. And now, uh, if you can tell us a little bit about what's happened with the person that Leonardo DiCaprio played and what he's doing with ARP in a positive way. The person you're talking about is Frank Abagnale. Mm -hmm. And he is one of the world's most respected authorities on forgery, embezzlement, and secure documents. And what's most important, he's worked with, for over 40 years with the FBI, advising them on all of these different um, areas. But now he has joined AARP, and he's working in conjunction with AARP to fight fraud 
and we are so happy to have him with us. Well, and first-hand experience, he comes as a thief, as a con artist, exactly. and he brings that, uh, that terrible on-the-ground experience uh, to us. Absolutely. So, so that's an interesting relationship that we have and very helpful to our, our members. Uh, so uh, now there are opportunities for people to tap into some of the resources that we have available. If you can take a moment, uh, Migdalia, because you go out and do presentations yes. throughout the state of Connecticut. What kinds of resources do you bring to people? What can they, what can they expect at a presentation and what kind of resources? Okay. When we go to do the different presentations, there's two booklets that we bring with us. The ARP watchdog alert mm -hmm. that tells you all the different um, alerts that are going on, everything that's happening, and as we talk about them, and the con excuse me, con artist playbook. Okay, and here, like we were talking about Frank, yeah, we talk about a lot of other con artists who have shown us what they do and how they do it and how they get to people and the different ways that they do it. So this is two very good booklets for you to have and share with your friends. Also, I wanted to let you know that besides um, finding information online mm -hmm. about Fraud Watch, mm -hmm. you can get a phone call, you can use the following phone number for Fraud Fighter Call Center, okay? And that number is 1-877-908-3360. One eight seven seven nine zero eight three three six zero. So, for those of you that don't have a computer, cannot go online to find out about these different alerts, you can always call, and you will get someone, a live person, to talk to. Okay. And there's another way also. You can do it via mail. So you call and you say, "I would like to um, get these alerts." and I would like to get them via mail. And so you will get them. Just call this number and you will get it. And let me mention, you did mention the website and we always love to be able to have yes. you communicate both with a live person. I know that's sort of refreshing these <laughs> days, but we try to offer right. that to you. And the uh, actual website is arp.org backslash Fraud Watch Network. Again, and we, we hope to have that on the screen for you to uh, see as well, aarp.org backslash Fraud Watch Network. So let's go back for a moment, uh, Migdalia, to the actual presentations that mm -hmm. you do. Besides, we mentioned the IRS. Uh, we mentioned phone calls, uh, winning money. Tell us a little bit more, if you were doing a presentation right now, what, so elaborate a little bit more on some of the information there. What would you be presenting to your audience? Well, I usually when I start, I try mm -hmm. to find out what's going on with the people that I'm presenting to. Mm -hmm. If anyone has been a victim of any type of fraud. And do you find a lot yes, of people have been victims? at first people are, you know, don't want to say anything, but eventually they open up. Mm -hmm. And especially before even starting the presentation, just going by and talking to people individually, you'll be surprised how much they open up to you and you find out what happened here, what happened there, next thing you know, you know what, that happened to me too. Someone called me, a debt collector, who really wasn't a debt collector. Mm -hmm. So you should know if you owe anyone any money, go through your bank statements monthly. Important point, yep. You know, find out, you know, what do I owe? Do I owe this company? Before you even give out information about what's going on. Also, keep in mind that when we do these presentations, we usually have law enforcement, <coughs> excuse me, um, partners that come with us. So we might have someone from the post office, we might have someone from the Better Business Bureau, we might have someone from the Attorney General's office. And, and Migdalia, you're, you're reading off now, a it's called our contact Yes, list. I was going to talk about that Just a to mention, bit. ARP uh, has partnered with, I think it's about a dozen or more exactly. organizations, and we can provide this information to you that uh, Migdalia has, as she's mm -hmm. saying, it's Attorney General's Office, Better Business mm -hmm. Bureau, Department of Insurance, Department of Banking, mm -hmm. uh, uh, police, uh, uh, law enforcement people that go out in the community with you at times, right, right to do presentations? Exactly. Postal Inspection Service. Yes. You'll be surprised who you're going to have come with us. Exactly. Many times we know in advance 
what that group needs or what's going on with that particular audience. Mm -hmm. So when we have people come out, it depends on what's happening with them, basically. You know, I, I don't know if you want to comment on this or not, but I know something I hear a lot about. Mm -hmm. I, I like to use my debit card a lot. I like to be cash free. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're a society now of a lot of people using debit cards. But there are places where you really should be uh, very careful about using your debit card. Is that correct? One of the um, most used debit card place where you should be very, very careful is at a gas station. Because? Because they have now, many of the scammers have installed um, little machines mm -hmm. that will read off your debit card and take all of your information. What I do now is I go inside. It's a little extra walk, yep. even if I'm going to use my debit card, because right. like you said, we don't carry around that much cash. So I go inside and yep. I do it in there versus yep. doing it uh, at the pump because of these things happening. Well, you know, speaking I, of debit cards, you, you, um, I got a call once, my, thankfully my bank monitors my debit card, mm -hmm. uh, where my debit card was being used out of state and they saw some uh, suspicious activity on the card that was nothing like what I would have done and it turned out that somebody, I have no idea how they compromised my card so you know I had to put in all the protect additional protections with it. And you had mentioned to me off camera, Miguel, you had a personal scam. Yes. Uh, do, you, do you care to relay that to our viewers? That yes, I will. But before I go to that, mm. in reference to the debit cards yes. or credit cards, but mostly debit cards, um, the bank that I bank with, I guess something happened with them, but about a month ago, they sent out new debit cards to everyone because they said they had been compromised. Mm -hmm. So next thing you know, you're having a new number and you have to tell people <laughs> you have a new number now and what's going on. Yes. But I'll, I'll let you know, the banking um, financial um, organizations are know what's going on or are on top of the different scams that are happening. So many times, many of the banks will call you first or let you know that this is happening and you will receive a letter. I was My, even, I, not to interrupt you, but no. you're reminding me of something. I was uh, traveling recently out of state and I went to use my debit card and, and it wouldn't be used and I called my bank yeah. and they said, you didn't, you didn't tell us you were going out of state. Exactly. I didn't know I was supposed to, but that's a good thing, right? Exactly. And you were about to say on that? Oh, no, and I was just going to go on and tell you about what happened to me. And yes, the scam. absolutely, please. The, my scam was with the IRS, and it was about two months ago. And it was after, you know, the April 15th um, deadline and yes. whatnot. But I got a phone call. It was a weird number, but it did say Internal Revenue Service. So I said, okay, where am I getting this call? Caller so ID was yeah, IRS. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I pick up the phone. And they said, well, you owe the IRS some money. You need to call this number back. So I said, OK, all right. But that's all I got, OK? No one live, nothing mm -hmm. at all. So OK, I hang up, and I go, that, that, that number doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. So I went on the uh, website, irs.gov, mm -hmm. and I got their number, and I called directly. Mm -hmm. And I said, I just received this call. And I need to find out if it was you. See, I called the number that was yes. on the website. Yeah, exactly, but not everyone does yep. that. And that's where the problem comes. Yep. Because you'll tend to call back that number. Why? It's Internal Revenue Service. You're scared. And you, you get know? scared. Yeah. You yeah. get nervous. Exactly. So you tend to call it back. Right. Correct? So when you call... Um, so the lady said, give me the number. And I said, fine. I gave her the number. She said, stay on the line. I need to make some investigations. She never asked me for my social security number. OK? Mm -hmm. you, because you know you put that down for your, um, I, in your IRS numbers. Exactly. She just said, let me check on the number. Mm -hmm. OK? She checked the number. That number was coming from Washington State. Not Washington, D.C., where Washington, still the IRS doesn't get on the phone Exa and call you anyway. Exactly. Yet. They won't call you. Mm -hmm. If you owe the IRS money, because there's a couple things going on right now. If you call, I mean, if you owe the IRS money, you will get a letter, mm -hmm. a formal letter. 
that tells you what you owe, what your account is, and then you can you look go forward from there. On that letter, there will be a phone number for you to call. Okay. Okay. But keep in mind also that the IRS is looking at other, yeah, to get other debt collectors to help them collect these debts. Right. But before any of that happens, you will get a signed letter from the Internal Revenue Service letting you know what's going to happen. So there is a legitimate reason exactly. that the IRS would be with some folks looking to collect debts, mm -hmm. but they would only be doing it via letter, uh, legitimately, right. hopefully. Exactly. And then you would have to follow up from the letter as opposed to if you get a phone call and from then the if IRS, you get a phone is call, not you, what they would Exactly, and if you get the phone call, you know who's calling you. Right. Because right. you know what the company is. And, and these are the kind of things that, as McDowell is out in the community, along with our other Fraud Watch Network uh, volunteer presenters, do is come into your community and let you know, again, how to protect and prevent fraud. And McDowell, I want to uh, let our viewer know also, another number that you can call is 1-866-295-7200. Uh, I'm going to repeat that again in a moment. That is a number where you can call, and that message will be fielded if you want to speak uh, directly to our ARP Connecticut office. You can ask for me, Elaine Warner. I'm going to give you my direct line as well. Uh, but that toll-free number, again, is 866-295-7279. Uh, Migdalia, I want to come back to you again, because you've been such a great volunteer with us. You're volunteering yeah. again today. Mm -hmm. uh, is uh, for those folks that are interested in volunteering to sort of circle back from what you said at the beginning of mm -hmm. our program, uh, and I heard you use the word rewarding, your experience yes. with the volunteer. We've been so grateful to have you out well, thank you. representing us in the community. But again, for folks that might be interested in joining the Fraud Watch Network in volunteering, uh, maybe again, what drew you to it and what, what you see are the rewards of it? Well, when we do presentations, mm -hmm there's always someone that'll come up and say, wow, how'd you get involved in that? Mm -hmm. And so you talk to them individually and you sign them up. There's a card that we have and um, we, you know, we, it's like a referral. Mm -hmm. We refer the person to you mm -hmm. and from there they get called mm -hmm. and find out what they want to do. Like you said before, there's various areas in ARP to work with. So you choose what you want to work with. But if you're really interested in uh, working on getting rid of these scams and helping people, and like you also said before, remember, it's not only the elderly. This is happening now to everyone. It doesn't matter what age. Once you start and you get out there and you have finances, it can happen to you. Well, and the unfortunate thing, I'm going to come back again to that horrible statistic that every two seconds exactly. somebody's uh, identity is stolen. But, but thank you for it. It's always so, mm -hmm. I'll use the word again, rewarding for me to hear as the program specialist for volunteer engagement, your experience with volunteering with ARP. And if you're watching and you're interested in knowing more about volunteering, I always think the best way is for me to be able to talk to you on a one-to-one. -one. I'm going to give you my direct line. You can call in the ARP nonprofit Connecticut office. That number is 860-548-3169. Again, 860-548-3169. Elaine Warner, Program Specialist for Volunteer Engagement. And just quickly, uh, Migdalia had mentioned we have other programs in addition to the Fraud Watch Network. Fraud Watch is one of our biggest one, and it certainly has an enormous appeal because, as we said, we, it affects uh, all of us at any age, but we do advocacy, we do community outreach. Mm -hmm. If you're someone that likes to speak with your local uh, elected officials, we have opportunities for that. Uh, we have a big program on caregiving, uh, supporting our uh, people receiving care and yeah. those uh, actually doing the caregiving. Uh, we do consumer issues. We, you heard me mention at the beginning of the show, if you tuned in then, we want everybody to age with quality and dignity. So there's so many uh, issues that surround that so that we can all age comfortably in our own homes. So all of this is important to ARP. Uh, I hope it's important to you. We're going to come and see you again right here in your community. 
real possibilities with AARP. So we want to thank you for taking the time today to watch and hopefully you've learned something, had some good takeaways that are going to enhance your life. I want to thank Migdalia Cruz, our volunteer, a presenter with the Fraud Watch Network. So real possibilities with ARP. Hope to see you again and thanks for watching.